Hi, it's pretty quiet in this week's weekly roundup, especially on the crowdfunding side, but we certainly do have whiffies. So you're probably wondering where JLC PCB Man is. He told me the other day that he's been extremely busy rescuing PCBs around the world. What? You told me he was busy. What's he been doing? He's a slob. Hi, this video is being sponsored by JLC PCB. If you want high quality PCBs with a fast turnaround time, then I suggest checking them out. They currently have an offer on at the moment where you can pick up 10 PCBs for only $2. And if you're a first time customer, you can get $20 off shipping off your first order. So go and check them out. There's not much happening over at Kickstarter, but here's a campaign that's an update on an older one. It's a board that does all the hard work of controlling stepper motors for you. It contains an Antmega 328PB MCU, intelligent stepper driver handling acceleration and velocity control, high accuracy encoder, 5 volt LDO, and breaking out 15 GPIOs. It is also housed on the back of a Trinamic TMC2208 stepper motor, and the whole shebang is powered from a 6.5 to 12 volt DC supply. The Tachyon is yet another campaign for a SAM D51 breakout board from Rabid Prototypes. It has all the MCU support components, standard ISP header, and pushes out 24 GPIOs for you to play with. It doesn't seem to be gaining much support, shame really, because they do come out with decent boards. Nerdonic are back again on Indiegogo with a slightly larger version of their Exxon called the Exxon Proto. This is the same as the Exxon Mini running the SAM D21, but with 21 GPIOs pushed out. Over at Crowd Supply, there's a USB-C power adapter tester in pre-launch. Its primary use case is testing, validating, and debugging USB Type-C power adapters. It has a GUI that displays voltage, current, and general information on power adapter performance. It can also perform automated testing for production setups. One thing that is lacking on the Pi is decent hardware-based security. The Zing key looks to address that by providing key storage and generation encryption, RTC, and a true random number generator. They have APIs supporting Python, C, and C++, but can also be integrated with apps like Lux File Encryption, OpenSSL, AWS IoT, and Ethereum Blockchain. For those getting excited about another source of crypto horsepower for mining, don't get too excited. I doubt it would have the grunt to be viable. Back in weekly roundup number 52, we saw the Nutus N5. It was a promising module, contained in a tiny 41 by 30 millimeter package, is an all winner H5, 512 meg DDR3 RAM, 8 gig eMMC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and pushing out 80 pins supporting 38 GPIOs, 100 megabit ethernet, audio, and HDMI. They are now putting up the module and dev board for pre-order with shipping due the end of August. Let's see if they actually can deliver this one on time. The Linux kernel is starting to see more mature support for a lot of the ARM-based socks out there. Last month we saw kernel 4.17 released, which included driver updates for Allwinner, AMLogic, MediaTek, Samsung, Rockchip and Qualcomm socks, as well as introducing new support for a bunch of other socks like the STM432MP157. Kernel 4.18 now brings in support for the Snapdragon 845 and AM335X running the Pocket Beagle as well as more fixes and support for ARM hardware. There's really a heck of a lot of changes. In summary, better support for all these ARM-based SBCs we're seeing. And talking about better graphics driver support, we're starting to see a lot of work done on supporting the AM Logic socks. There was recent support added for video decoding and rendering into the Linux kernel via patch set. So if you're willing to hack around, you could pull the kernel, apply the patch set, and test it out. If you saw my LoRa SMS project, you would have seen how easy it is to send text messages between mobile phones without a mobile network. All you need is two units containing a LoRa module and a small MCU and you're done. Seems someone else has cracked on to the idea and have made it into a polished product. Contains all the goodies such as LiPo battery charging, selectable encryption keys, front panel LCD for message display, and access point connectivity for your phone. Looks pretty good. 
If you want an all-in-one sensor Arduino shield, then this one has temperature, humidity, barometer, altitude, air quality, and UV, ambient light, and infrared sensors. Also has a header for a Nokia LCD. The Pi LC is a Pi hat that provides opto-isolated GPIOs. It can handle up to 24 volt inputs and 64 volt outputs, as well as being able to interface with industrial current loop sensors such as flow meters and thermocouples. Laura Wayne gateways tend to be on the pricey side. This one is still a little pricey, but it's an open source unit, which gives it extra points. It can be configured in several gateway modes, transferring MQTT messages, LoRaWAN connectivity, local direct TCP IP server and client, and as a LoRa repeater. It provides the two channels using two independent LoRa modules, and also has USB for 4G modem and dual RJ45 ports. The SCLD is a small solar charger board for 1S XP LiPo batteries that will also drive LEDs at night. A good replacement for those dodgy garden lights that never work after a week. The wide 5 to 45 volt DC input range means you can use it on pretty much anything and charge it up to 1 amps. There's over voltage and over current protection and there's also a dual thief output allowing you to power LEDs with increased battery life. If you run a CNC then you'll be aware of how much electrical noise can be injected into the system. This simple board provides a bunch of opto isolated limit switch inputs. Back in weekly roundup number 47 we saw Stefan Kremser's popular ESP8266D author, which employs a bug in the Wi-Fi protocol allowing it to cause havoc on Wi-Fi networks. Essentially it de-authenticates a device causing it to have to re-authenticate, making Wi-Fi completely unusable for that device. Travis Lynn has come out with a modified version of the de-author, which puts it into a handy wristwatch. Nice. Here's another DC boost converter, but this one steps up a 12 volt DC input with a variable output of up to 60 volts. You can also control the output current, handling up to 10 amps, which is pretty cool. Even though it's an aluminium based PCB, you'll definitely need a heatsink at that current level. If you've got a few spare GPIOs left, and want a jog shuttle style input control, then this is a simple board with a rotary encoder on board. This next one is yet another ESP based board, but is designed to control door locking mechanisms. Powered from a 12 volt 2 amp DC supply, it has an RFID Wigand reader and terminal blocks for connecting to magnetic door locks. There's also a programming header and a couple of extra GPIOs broken out. Just a reminder, I'll be shortly ordering a bunch of the Power Projector Rev 2.0 series boards. So if you want to be part of that first batch, add your name to the waitlist to be notified when they come into stock. An Aussie maker, Sion from Unexpected Maker, has put up his Reflow Master on Tindy. This allows you to hack your toaster oven to turn it into a Reflow oven. The kit comes with PCB, TFT screen and thermocouple. However, you'll need to be able to do some hacking with your toaster oven. So I suggest watching his YouTube videos on how to do that. We've seen a huge amount of LoRa based cards, but this one is pretty cool. Not only does this board have a standard SX1278 LoRa module, but an STM32 allowing connectivity via standard M2 edge connector. Nice. It comes preloaded with software based on STM32 cube HAL and speaks LoRaWAN 1.0.2 with control via standard AT commands. You can reprogram the firmware to support your country's ISM frequency band and everything is open source and open hardware. Even better. Early last year I predicted 2018 as being a year of the FPGA for makers as it's the next evolution for maker projects. Luke Valenti is one of these people behind this next evolution by providing small breakout boards for cheap FPGAs called the Tiny FPGA. He's now going full steam ahead with these boards and you can now pick them up on SparkFun. Oh, yeah, well, okay. It's on back order, so you'll have to add your name to the waitlist. The tiny FPGA BX contains an ICE 40 LP8K FPGA, 8 megabit SPI flash to hold the FPGA code, and 3.3 and 1.2 volt LDOs. It breaks out 36 GPIOs from the FPGA and programming is via USB. He's put in a great amount of effort with these boards. It comes pre-installed with an open source bootloader and he's enabled a number of HDL design tools to be able to program it. Nice. He also has the Tiny FPGA AX2, 
which is a cheaper version running the same FPGA, but without USB and LDOs, which you'll need this programmer for. Over at Adafruit they have a handy colour coded Pi header, just the thing to avoid having to count pins. And they also have a bunch of CD spindle motors in. I have absolutely no idea where they got them from, but Adafruit have at least a hundred of them in stock. What can they be used for? Don't ask me, but I might pick up a couple for a rainy day. If you're into sniffing Bluetooth, then this might be a handy board. It contains the NRF51822, allowing you to sniff and capture Bluetooth 4.0 traffic using tools like Wireshark. If you want to power your Pi over PoE, then Adafruit have a PoE module in stock. Great idea for a low cost solution if you don't mind extra cables dangling off the board. Note also that this board does not support the official PoE protocol, but the regular hacked version that we're seeing a lot of these days. Over at Seed Studio they have the Lopi 4 in stock. This was a board that was released earlier in the year by Pycom and provides LoRa, Sigfox, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth wireless protocols. It's mainly designed for running MicroPython with a full API supporting it, but can also be programmed using bare metal, although you'd miss out on the cool API. Seed also have in stock the NRF52840 breakout board. This is a big step up from the NRF52832 IC and provides 802.15.4, which is a short range wireless protocol similar to Zigbee. 256 kilobyte RAM instead of 64, one megabyte flash instead of 512, on-chip PA boosting output power, CryptoCell quad SPI and USB. This board has LDO USB hub supporting DAP link over virtual com, 64 megabit quad SPI flash, and breaks out 24 GPIOs. This little baby will support a plethora of wireless frameworks. Over at DigiKey you can pick up a newer revision of the ESP32W Rover module. The B version provides an additional 4 megabyte RAM, boosting it to 8 megabytes. It also has 4 megabyte SPI flash, the same 240 MHz ESP32 SOC, and 34 GPIOs pushed out supporting Ethernet, 4-bit SDIO, SPI, I2C, UART, and other stuff you'd expect to see. DigiKey have it for $8.44 US at one-off quantities, or you can pick it up from Mouser for $4.20 at 650 quantities. Over at Banggood, they have the Lychee Pi Nano. This is a tiny SD card size board running an all-winner F1C100 SOC. This is a fairly old SOC with only 32 meg RAM and support for USB, SPI, UART and H.264 video decoding. But bang for your buck is still pretty good. For $10 US you can get a board pushing out 18 GPIOs, MIPI DSI, USB and SD slot. Runs off 5 volts at only 54 milliamp queers and current. They also have in the TS80 portable soldering iron. It's a fairly decent one with a fair amount of talk about it over at EEV blog. It runs an STM32 controlling the OLED display, temperature, standby and sleep modes and it's powered from USB Type-C. The tips are changed using an audio jack style connector as you'd find on more expensive irons. Haven't had these guys around for a while. IC Station have a small breakout board that provides MP3 decoding from an SD card. It runs the XYV17B IC. What the heck? Sounds like someone just mashed the keyboard to come up with that name. Anyway, Access is over UART, but also supports eight inputs that trigger playback of different MP3 files. We've seen a number of charge controllers around, but this one has a snazzy LCD display. Powered from 6 to 60 volts, it also has some basic charge protection and can also be controlled over UART. This is a pretty cheap 2.4 GHz based frequency remote control kit that supports six channels. The transmitter runs a coin cell battery, so not the world's best voltage levels, but you may be able to squeeze it to 3.3 volts for interfacing to an MCU, and the receivers are powered from 3 to 12 volts. Here's another option if you want to DIY your own PoE for your Pi. This one will accept 24 volts in and deliver a steady 5 volts at 3 amps. They say in the notes that 3 amps is max, so it may or may not be enough for the Pi. But at a dollar a pop, yeah, I think I'll get a couple. Over at Analog Lamb, they are taking a stab at the STEM education market with the Fish 32. 
It's an ESP32 based board with a bunch of features like 100 megabit Ethernet, LoRa, SD slot, dual HBridge ICs, and several open drain GPIOs. It also has 9DOF IMU, proximity, light, color, and gesture sensors. Even though they have labeled it as an education board, Analog LAM haven't yet come out with any courses or lessons. Making a board is the easy part, documenting it properly is 10 times harder. Making educational courses around it is 10 times harder than that. If you like this video and would like to see more of them, then you can join the bunch of really cool patrons I have supporting me over at Patreon and on PayPal. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you really enjoy it. As always, links are on my website, so check them out. Thanks for watching and see you next week.